After having delivered the changes, Jerry goes ahead and requests a build. There are ways to set options. He could have requested personal build, but in this case, since he has already delivered, we'll say that he assumes that he fires a build here. So while the build is going on, Jerry goes on to refresh the work item. He can pass on some information to Cindy saying that uh, he has actually created a build. Please test the client against the new server and let me know. Okay, let's see the status of the build. It's running, it's around 50% complete at this stage. We move to the Visual Studio client where Jerry also, uh, Cindy also can be looking at the builds. So she expands the build node. also notices that the build is running. The information about the build could have been obtained in various ways. For example, she could have been looking at the dashboard to see how the builds are going in, which in fact the build master must be doing it. If you remember, we had the dashboard and the builds definition should be coming in here, how the builds are going and all. So we notice that uh, build has succeeded. Build master also notices that. Going back to the Cindy's client, we uh, refresh it to see that the build has really been done. So what does this build gives? This build gives Cindy a new server that she can now get and test her client against it. She goes to the download tab. She can see the status of the build. It's a green build. She sees that the build artifact is attached with this. So she can go ahead and download the server. Notice that these uh, Cindy and Jerry just for the sake of convenience in this demo are working, uh, seems to be working on the same machine, but they could have been working in two different continents in two different time zones altogether. And there is no requirement for them to be actually talking to each other outside of the client. Starts to consume the build artifact. Uh, this is the Java server. Cindy has no idea how this gets built and what all it takes but she goes and and saves it on the local disk. Overrides the previous server. And let's see now what she does is she can go ahead and run the client again. So let us see what happens this time. Okay, so this time the response is proper. So Jerry has indeed fixed the problem. Let's just go ahead and thank Jerry for that. Now let's do a quick recap of what we did. So we have the feeds as I kept mentioning in the demo that there are more than one ways of getting at the information. One is running the queries in a traditional way. So I open up uh, my team feeds and see what has happened. So let's see if we can relate to what has happened in the client. So we have this today eight items found and most of the hap things happened in the work item number 106. Let's, let's expand this to see what has all has happened. We go from bottom up. Uh, we see that uh, the build master actually created this work item. Cindy changed it to in progress and then after some time Cindy made it back to new because he stopped working assigning it to Java. Cindy assigned it to Java and added a comment. 
Jerry asked for approval in the work item and he started working on this at certain point in the time the build master actually went ahead and approved the work item thereafter Jerry added a comment saying that he has actually fired a build and finally Cindy said that yes uh, the problem has been fixed so you notice and these feeds are available to anyone and that's how uh, even if you are not online if you are not at that point monitoring what's happening in the team you can come back at any point of time and know exactly what has happened in the team you can also filter out teams based on what all is of interest to you you don't have to look at all feeds and all similarly uh, you could uh, if you are a build master or if you're interested only in builds and all you can look at only the build events to see what all build events so today only the build event that happened was that build was uh, successfully fired and that was done around 10 minutes ago so feeds is an interesting way most of the people uh, prefer pull model where uh, you get the information when you want some people want the push model where an email is sent to them whenever the changes happen RTC gives you option of uh, various means or some people may just be looking at dashboard to see the events happening and then taking their actions accordingly basically you're not limited to one particular means of communication the choice is in your hands and the feeds actually summed, summed up quite nicely what has we what have we done during this demo as you can see it here